we're going to start on page 64 of your lab manual, the first bone being the nasal bone. So there are two nasal bones. In this image of the um, skull, you can see the nasal bones are in purple. There's two of them, so the parentheses next to the name of the bone in your lab manual is how many there are in the skull. And the only feature here that you want to know is the frontonasal suture. Um, in the next slide here, you can see a real human skull. You can see the nasal bones um, number 17. There's two of them. Here's one, here's two. And you can see the nice frontonasal suture right here. So the nasal bone will form the upper bridge of your nose where it contacts your forehead. Um, the rest of your nose, right, we're, do you remember what the rest of your nose is made of? And that's going to be hyaline cartilage. All right, so now let's take a look at our next bone. Oh, this is a nice x-ray of a broken bone, uh, broken nose. So we can see the x-ray here. Um, we can see sort of the outline of the person's nose, and then we can see where the bone actually exists to support the upper bridge of the nose and that little break right there. Um, what's really cool about this x-ray is that you can see the sphenoid bone really well and the sphenoid sinus. So notice that um, I'm going to outline the sphenoid bone for you. This depression that I just drew, this is the hypophyseal fossa. This is the dorsum cellae. This would be the tuberculum cellae. And then we have the body of the sphenoid bone like this. Um, and then we have the, the part of the sphenoid bone that dips down. Those would be the pterygoid processes. And this air, right, this is black. It is um, air space, and that would be the sphenoid sinuses. And we can also see a little bit of a frontal sinus, so right there. Oh, actually, that is not the frontal sinus, excuse me, that is the ethmoid sinus. Pretty cool, right? And then also you can sort of make out the cribriform plate between the arrows here, and you can kind of see those little gaps, those olfactory foramina, where the olfactory fibers drop down. So then you can really see this really cool position of your brain, you have this nerve fiber called the olfactory bulb and then the fibers would drop down and form this upper part of your nasal cavity is where you actually sense smell. All right, next bone in the list is the lacrimal bone. The lacrimal bone is going to be in the medial orbits and we can see it outlined nicely here. So this is our lacrimal bone. And the word lacrimal or um, means tear, um, lagrimas, or tears in Spanish. So these, um, this bone is going to take the tears from your eye and allow the tears to drain into the nose through this hole, this opening that's being pointed out right here. So this is called the nasolacrimal canal. Okay, naso, we want to put the nose in there because this is the tears will drain into this canal. Um, there is a feature called the lacrimal sac that we'll learn later and it drains right into the nasal cavity. So if you produce more tears, like when you're crying, um, your nose tends to run because your tears will drain in here. So nasolacrimal canal, okay? Um, and the orbital surface is gonna be up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw like that. So it forms the orbit. Um, and then we can skip the um, lacrimal groove. So cross out the lacrimal groove. Okay, but that's a lacrimal bone. So let's do a quick review. What bone might this be behind the lacrimal bone? This is going to be your ethmoid bone. And if I, I asked you to identify the landmark of your ethmoid bone, this is the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone. Great. Now let's do some more review. What is this round opening here? This is where your optic nerve goes through, so this is called the optic canal. What bone is the optic canal made from, or made of, or part of, I should say? Uh, that is going to be part of your sphenoid bone. All right. Now, this opening you should know as well. That's also part of your sphenoid bone. This is called the superior um, orbital fissure. Okay, and then this piece of bone that you can see from the outside, that's your greater wing of the sphenoid bone. So all of this area is your sphenoid bone. All right, 
Um, I think that's all the review we'll do for now in this picture. Let's move on to the next bone, which is the vomer bone. And this is a nice, easy bone to spot. So number 13, the vomer bone is shaped like a expanded sail, maybe more of a shape like that. But it's you're looking at it from the front down here. So you're only seeing a small portion of the vomer bone. So that's what you're seeing here. It forms the nasal septum um, of your nose, right, of your nasal cavity. So it helps to divide the left and right nasal cavity. Um, you only have one um, vomer bone. And uh, just a review, what bone forms the superior portion of the nasal septum? So this is the inferior portion of the nasal septum. What bone is 16, right? What bone is going to come down like this? And again, that's your ethmoid bone. And that portion is called the perpendicular plate of that ethmoid bone. All right, the next bone is the palatine bones. And um, let's go ahead and look for the palatine bones in this image, this mid-sagittal section first. So the palatine bone is gonna help form your hard palate. Now, the hard palate is the roof of your mouth that is supported by bone. And I'm going to outline or underline the entire hard palate for you. So when you put your tongue up to the roof of your mouth, um, you're putting your tongue up to two separate bones. The anterior bone is the maxilla, and the posterior bone is the palatine bone. So let's take a look at this picture here, right? So now we have, we're looking at the roof of your mouth, and we can see um, the suture lines here. So we can see there's a division. There's one suture line that goes across like this, and there's another suture line that go, divides in two like this, okay? So the palatine bones are here. There are two palatine bones. Here's one, and here's another one. The palatine bones are actually shaped like a letter L, but what you're looking at is the flat. So if I drew a letter L, you're looking at this portion. So this is gonna be called the horizontal plate of your palatine bone. Your horizontal plates will have two, at least one big hole so the one larger opening here is called the greater palatine foramen. And some people, not all skulls, will have some smaller holes, and those are called the lesser palatine foramina. Okay, so that's where we would find your palatine bone on the roof of your mouth. So one way of looking at this from your entire skull put together, right, we, we see the roof of the mouth. Um, the, this image is not the best, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw the suture lines down like this, okay? So this is going to be your palatine bone, okay? And then number four is pointing to an opening, and that's gonna be the greater palatine foramen. And then number five is pointing to two smaller holes, and those are the lesser palatine foramina, okay? Depending on your skull, some skulls only have one hole, and that would be just the greater palatine foramen. All right, so that is your palatine bone. Now let's move on to the maxillae. You have two maxillae, one maxilla, okay? And uh, this is a good place to start because it actually does form the anterior part of your hard palate. So the maxilla is gonna form most of the roof of your mouth. And the part that you're looking at here that forms the roof of your mouth is called the palatine process. So the palatine process, also called pal palatal or palatal process, I always say palatine, so I'm having trouble with the other one, um, that's gonna be third from the bottom of your list under maxilla. Um, so let's take a look at the maxilla, sort of how you would from the anterior view of the skull. Um, you have two maxillae, right? So this is just one. So it divides down the middle right underneath your, your nose and it holds the upper teeth um, so let's get started with some terms here. So the orbital surface, um, what's one way to look at the orbital surface here? The orbital surface, well, let me just point it out in here, right? So this is your orbital surface, and it's going to form the floor of your orbit. Actually, I'm gonna move back to the image here. So um, let me remove some of these things. So I'm going to write in or make in green 
your maxilla and then we can see the orbital surface. Okay. Okay. So this is the orbital surface. So the orbital surface does form the floor of the orbit. All right. So that's enough of orbital surface. The frontal process is here because it's the one part of the bone that's going to um, reach towards the frontal bone, right? So that makes sense, the frontal process. Now let's look at some other terms here. Let's move to our maxilla section. All right, so let's find the infraorbital foramen. So we're looking for two really nice big holes underneath the orbit, infraorbital foramen. Um, and then we have an infraorbital margin. So the, remember the margin is just the region that creates the orbit here, right? Um, let's find the um, next word in your list is the alveolar process or processes um, because there's two maxilla. So I want to point out the suture line, right? So here's the suture line that divides the two maxillae and the um, alveolar process. Now the word alveolar refers to bag-like and if you were to take out all your top teeth, you would be left with bag-like spaces. So the alveolar process is just the edge of this bone that holds your upper teeth. So all of that's the alveolar process. We already talked about the palatine process, and now let's look for the incisive canal. So um, actually, for the incisive canal, we have to look at it from underneath again. Um, maybe, let's erase this here. Whoops. Let's go ahead and erase these. So again, we have the palatine process. So all of this, right, up to where the palatine bone is, that's your palatine process. Now, I'm going to erase just this area here and take a look at the incisive canal. So there's a little hole where number one is pointing to, right? And that's your incisive canal. So it's right behind your incisors. Your incisors are your first four teeth here. Um, and it's to allow blood vessels to travel to the roof of your mouth to, um, to give blood to the roof of your mouth. All right, lastly, the maxillary sinus. So again, a sinus cannot be seen in the whole bone. You'd have to cut open the bone because it's a cavity. So this is another bone with a sinus. All right, let's move on to the next bone. Um, this is going to be the, oops, sorry, inferior nasal concha bone. So the inferior nasal concha bone is a separate bone all to itself. So we can see the outline of it here. It forms that lower ridge, lateral ridge off the um, sides of your nasal cavity. We can also see it really well right here. That's your inferior nasal concha. And here's your another inferior nasal concha. Now, when you're looking um, straight on to a skull like this from the anterior view, there's only two ridges, two conche that you can see with your eyes. You can see the inferior nasal concha here. And you can also see, oops, you can also see the middle nasal concha number 15, okay? So remember the middle nasal concha is actually part of your ethmoid bone, okay? The inferior nasal concha is that inferior nasal concha bone. The superior nasal concha of the ethmoid bone is way up high and you can't see it, okay? So just remember that the two visible conche that you're able to see, all right, is the inferior and middle nasal concha. All right, moving on to the zygomatic bone. So here's a nice picture of the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone, it forms your cheek. Um, so the only part that I want you to know is the temporal process. So remember that our cheeks, the cheekbone area, the zygomatic bone, has a process that forms a suture with our um, temporal bone, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So this area where this dot, I'm going to draw a little dotted line coming down like that. So this area is going to be the temporal process of the zygomatic bone because it helps to reach out and touch uh, the temporal bone, which is why it's called the temporal process. On the other side, oops, I'm just trying to change color here. On the other side, we have the temporal bone, okay? 
and the temporal bone has a zygomatic process all right, that reaches out and forms a, a suture line with the zygomatic bone. So all together, the two processes here, right, all together, it's called the zygomatic arch. All right. Um, you can cross out the zygomatical facial foramen, which you can see here, but I'm not going to cover that because on most of your skulls in the class, you can, barely can see one. Um, last bone of the facial bones is your mandible. So here it is. Um, let's get started. So everything on this picture is something that you should be able to find on the uh, picture, image, or real mandible. So the body of the mandible is just the main port part of the mandible. The coronoid process is the pointy part, all right? So the, here is your coronoid process. Um, I like to make the comparison to um, the movie Frozen where Elsa goes to her coronation and a coronation ceremony is where someone gets crowned, right? So the word coronoid means crown-like and so someone thought these points on this bone look like the points of a crown. So that's the coronoid process. Um, the second one down, or the third one down, excuse me, is the mandibular condyle or condylar process, and that's rounded. So remember the word condyle is usually a rounded part of bone that's round and smooth, and it usually creates a joint with another bone. And here is the joint that it creates. So I want you to know this joint. This is called the temporomandibular joint right here. And uh, sometimes people shorten this to TMJ. And this is where your jaw will hinge, right? So your mandibular condyle fits into this fossa of the temporal bone. Remember that's called the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. All right, moving on to the next term is the angle of the mandible. So any angle is just a sharp turn in the bone. So there's your angle. The ramus of the mandible, the word ramus means a bridge and usually they're kind of like a rectangle. So this area here, let me just change colors for clarity or not. Oops. That's, whoop. I'm ma making a big mess here. All right, we're not gonna change colors. So the ramus is just this bridge right here, right? So if I drew kind of a dotted line, that's your ramus. Um, the alveolar process or alveolar margin is the same as the maxilla. So it's the ridge, it's the border that holds your teeth. In this case, it's the lower teeth. Um, then we have the mental foramen and mandibular foramen. So be careful because the mental foramen is a hole on the chin. Remember the mental region is the chin. And the mandibular foramen is inside the ramus of the mandible. Okay, so both of those are for um, well, actually, the mental formants for a nerve, mandibular formants for blood vessels, um, mental protuberance. So if you looked at the mandible straight on, you would find that their bone is a little bit heavier right at where the chin is. And so that's your mandibular protuberance. And your mandibular notch is just this little curve right here, right, connecting the coronoid process and the mandibular condyle. All right, so that is your mandible. The last bone in this area, in this region, is going to be the hyoid bone. And the hyoid bone is a small bone that is the only bone that's actually not articulating with any other bone in the body. So it does not touch any other bone in the body. It's the only one that's held in place by soft tissues like ligaments and muscles. So it's really important to anchor the tongue and it is the upper margin of your larynx, which is where your vocal cords are, and it helps to, again, function as a movable base for the tongue. Um, so the body of your hyoid bone is just the heavy region, right? This is the main heavier part of the bone. The greater horn and lesser horn are little regions here, and those are for muscles to attach. Okay, so lesser horn are small little points and the greater horns are just the ends of the hyoid bone. All right, so let's review some items here. Um, I guess we can start in order. So number one, right, you can try this yourself, but I'll give you the answers as we go. So if you want to pause and try to work this um, face out, 
and then uh, unpause, and then I will tell you the answer. So number one is going to be the um, superior orbital fissure. Number two are going to be your nasal bones. Number three is going to be the supraorbital foramen. So it's a foramen here. It's not a notch, right? A notch would be a little cutout. So I'm going to, it would be a little cutout um, and not a complete hole like you see. Uh, number four is pointing to a circular opening. It's not really well um, pictured here, but that's going to be the optic canal. Number five is pointing to this purple bone. That's the sphenoid bone. Number 11 is your zygomatic bone. Number 12 is going to be your, I think that's going to be your lacrimal bone. <laughs> it's kind of an odd, a little bit off here. That's the lacrimal bone. Number 13, um, zygomatic bone. I'm not really sure. I think they're just pointing to the orbit or maybe there's a term there, but we can just forget about 13. Uh, number 14 is pointing to the infraorbital foramen of the maxilla. Number 15 is pointing to the middle um, nasal concha of the ethmoid bone. Number 21 is pointing to the inferior nasal concha. Number 22 is pointing to the temporal bone. Um, and the specific part of the temporal bone, the landmark, would be this rounded, the most inferior rounded portion. So that's called the... Um, um, now I'm blanking. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to come back to that. Um, you probably wrote it down, but I am having a serious brain fart right now, so don't feel bad if you do that on the test. Uh, number three, this is your maxilla. I'm sorry, number 23. Um, number 24 is going to be your mental foramen. Mastoid process, there it is. Mastoid process. Number 24 is mental foramen. Number 25 is your maxilla bone. I don't understand what the difference is here, so I'm going to say that's a maxilla bone. Maybe this 23 is pointing to the um, alveolar margin. Number 20 is your mandible. Number 19 here is going to be your vomer. Number 18 is going to be the perpendicular plate of your ethmoid bone. Number 17 is going to be also your ethmoid bone, and it's going to be the orbital plate, or lamina orbitalis. Number 16 is your temporal bone. Number 10 is your sphenoid bone. Number 9 is going to be that squamous suture. Number 8 is going to be the coronal suture. Number 7 is the frontal bone. And in fact, this area would be the frontal squama. And number six, I believe, is just the pink bone, which is the parietal bone. All right, so um, A minus for me. <laughs> I really missed out on that mastoid process. All right, and we're done with that lecture.